Hi, welcome to What the Future Insights. It's summertime, and it's warm outside, the first half of the year has already passed. So let's have a look at how COVID has influenced the labor market up until this point. There was already a video in May where I talked about the impact of COVID on the labor market with a focus on Germany. So we thought let's bring it up to another scale, increase the time period looking from January until June and also looking on a global scale at various job families and various industries. So we decided to cut this episode into two pieces. The first one now will be on the geography and on some job families while the other one will be on the industries that we will analyze. So why do we analyze the labor market? And why do we believe there's a correlation between the state of the labor market and the impact of COVID? Well, as mentioned in the other video before, we believe that the labor market is a very good indicator on the state of well-being of an economy because the better companies are doing, the more they would tend to invest into new people, meaning the more new jobs they would have to fill in. So we believe in a good economy, there are many jobs, while in an economy where there's trouble or struggle, the number of jobs will obviously decrease. And correlating that with the news we know from COVID, let's see whether there are any interesting findings. In order to make this analysis more comprehensive, let's just talk about two time periods, Q1, January through March and Q2, April through June. Q1 will be the pre-COVID period because for most countries in our analysis this was the time before COVID and Q2 will be the post-COVID period because most countries um, saw the impact of COVID during that time period. Let's get started. Overall, in the first half of 2020 there were 2.5 million job postings we analyzed. How do we do it? Well, we are setting up crawlers that would fetch all these jobs from job portals and career pages and so on download them and then in the seconds phase we can analyze them based on country, based on job family or based on industry. In the pre-COVID area, Q1, there were about 1.5 million jobs, while in Q2, in the post-COVID area, there were 1 million jobs. So you already see there's quite a big difference between those two time periods. Okay, let's start global. The peak week of job postings was in the middle of February. 165,000 job postings globally in our analysis. The low point was in the middle of April, so only exactly two months later, with 70,000 job postings. That's a decrease of over 60% from the top to the bottom. But let's maybe focus more on the averages. Between Q1 and Q2, the decline has been 30%. And looking at the last two months, May and June, we can already see again a slight increase of around 15%. Okay, so much for the global figures. Now let's pick out some countries. We created a list of 18 interesting countries, larger countries usually, that we would like to look at now. So what's your guess? Which country has gone the best through the COVID period? From road, it's China. China has experienced actually an increase in job postings between the pre and the post COVID area in our analysis. Well, and the main explanation here is that basically for China, everything started earlier. So in the middle of January, you can actually see almost no job postings when there was the big lockdown over there. And now it has already increased again by about 10% to the pre-COVID area. Okay, let's go to the second and third spot on our table. India and Switzerland. They have been approximately flat between Q1 and Q2. So now all the other countries in our table have actually quite significant decreases in job postings. And in position four and five, there would be Brazil and Singapore with a decrease of around 25%. Remember, our analysis stops in June. And that's the reason why Brazil is so far high on the table because most of the latest news we had about COVID in Brazil, they were only in July. And you can already see that in our numbers that end of June, the labor market already started to go down again. While in Singapore, the latest weeks have resembled somewhat of a recovery. So in the middle of the table are countries with a decrease of between 30 and 40%. And you will see mostly large economies there, such as Germany, the US, Vietnam, Italy, and France. Also Poland and Australia. And if you compare this middle tier of our list, you will see that there are actually quite significant differences. 
while the big economy United States is actually again more or less on a decline. Economies such as Germany, France and Poland show already, already quite, quite a relief in terms of an increased number of job postings again in the latest weeks. And to put that relief in some numbers, in the latest weeks the decline between the pre-COVID area was only about 30%. So now let's count down the bottom five of our list, meaning the five countries that had been hit the hardest by COVID in terms of the labor market impact. Great Britain and Ireland with a decrease of around 40%. Canada minus 55%. Sweden minus 67%. And in last place, the labor market that has been hit most by COVID is the Republic of Korea with minus 80%. So personally, I do see a correlation between what we see on the news about COVID and its impact on countries and on the labor market. I would be very curious to hear your opinion on that, to see how you believe your country stands at this time. So maybe you're curious and you ask yourself, well, how is my job or how is my job family performing on a global level? Well, the good news is, I also prepared some insights on that for you. I'm gonna keep it a bit short here and maybe if there are enough responses we can have an extra detailed video on that at some other stage. So the three job families that have been impacted least by COVID are IT, data analytics and manufacturing with a decrease of roughly 25%. Next up are medical jobs and finance jobs. Especially for medical, we have seen some rapid increases again and even some weeks are peaking over some weeks in the pre-COVID era. No surprise for me actually. And now some job families that have been impacted heavily by COVID with decreases of 40 or even 50% or more. We're talking about sales, marketing, procurement and logistics. And a big surprise for me is which job family is actually on the very bottom of our table. It is, with a decrease of 60%, the job, family, human resources. Of course, I'm super curious to hear your feedback on our analysis, uh, also on your perception of the situation. And don't forget, there's another episode where I will focus globally on all the industries. Thank you for watching. Take care. See you soon. Bye bye.